Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on theory and methods, focusing on the relationship between sociology and social policy. A key debate in sociology is over whether sociology should inform social policy. Some sociologists, such as Worsley, have suggested that the nature of sociology is not always connected to social issues. For example, research into aspects of family, identity, culture and health practices do not always focus on issues of national importance. And with the increasingly micro nature of some sociological research, it's not always necessary to inform social policy. And therefore, sociology can exist without the need to make social changes. However, others, such as Brewer, would suggest that sociology is best placed to investigate social issues and should address social problems. He argued that interventions by sociologists should inform the construction of social policy. However, there are many other considerations when examining the relationship between sociology and social policy, and many practical and ideological reasons why sociology does not inform social policy. And in this video, we're going to look at some of those. First of all, theoretical perspectives will hold different views on the relationship between sociology and social policy and we'll look at the positions of some of the main sociological theories on informal social policy. A second consideration in the debate is why sociology does not inform social policy, and these reasons are often ideological or logistical. Finally, we will look at some examples of where sociology has informed social policies, either directly or indirectly. But first of all, we will look at the different theoretical perspectives. Functionalism has a quite contradictory attitude to social policy, with earlier sociologists such as Durkheim suggesting that the purpose of scientifically studying society was to enable social institutions to make changes to ensure the harmonious running of society. Similarly, Parsons advocated the use of social policy in promoting traditional values, such as the nuclear family. But as functionalism evolved, their reactions to what they perceived to be permissive social policies that threatened traditional values saw them adopt a different position. One of personal responsibility, something that was then adopted by those in the new right who followed their ideologies. Neoliberalism and neoconservatism social policies both focus less on intervention, unless it threatens traditional values in the case of neoconservatives. Marxism, despite believing that sociology should inform social changes in society, have often been wary of the involvement of the ruling class in social policy. Marxists suggest that the purpose of laws is to protect the interests of the elites in society, and they look at laws governing property, educational policies that benefit the elites, such as allowing private schools, or as Zaretsky suggested, family policies that police the family. Even laws that seemingly benefit workers, such as health and safety legislation, are seen as a smokescreen, giving a caring face to capitalism, when in reality, having a healthy workforce actually benefits the ruling class. Feminism is divided somewhat on its approach to sociology and forming social policy. Radical feminism has suggested that social policies that appear to serve women often act as a method of control and reinforce traditional gender roles and reflect patriarchal interests. For example, maternity legislation that allowed women to take nine months off, paid, reinforced the idea that women should take on the expressive role. However, liberal feminists have used existing legal and social structures to lobby for changes and have seen policies that have changed the lives of women for the better. The Equal Pay Act, Sexual Discrimination Act, legalisation of abortion and divorce reform have arguably been influenced by feminist action. Realist theories, both left and right, see the role of sociology as providing solutions to the real problems in society, and we saw this in our study of crime and deviance. While they differ on their approaches to crime, both left and right realists have actively influenced the policies of the UK and the USA in recent governments with right realists influencing conservative and republic parties through zero tolerance policies and situational crime prevention, and left realism assisting new labour and social democratic approaches through looking to address inequality in society and the marginalisation of certain groups. The new right we mentioned alongside functionalism, but we can see some evidence of their views on how sociology should inform social policy. Despite believing the state should have minimal intervention, they have been influential in applying economic policies such as marketization and privatization to education and adopting neoliberal policies in welfare, reducing state benefits and lowering taxation, promoting personal responsibility, ironically through state intervention. Social democratic approaches have looked to sociology for guidance in policy. 
typified by New Labour's third wave politics, combining social development with economic development, New Labour was influenced by Anthony Giddens in filling in some of the gaps in society through policies such as EMA, greater integration of communities and continuing the marketisation and privatisation of education and healthcare. Having looked at the theoretical positions and understanding the different viewpoints, we have to look at why, with many arguing for sociology to be used in the formation of policy, doesn't sociology inform social policy? A primary reason for sociology not informing social policy is a clash of ideologies between governments and sociologists. With 40 years of neoliberal economics, many other sociological ideologies are critical of reduced social spending and leaving social issues to individuals or charities to resolve. There are clashes between ideologies such as Marxism on the left of the political spectrum with conservative and liberal Democrat and some labour ideologies that are on the right or in the centre. A second factor influencing the use of sociology and social policy is the cost of implementing recommendations from sociologists. The Black Report, which looked into health inequalities in the UK, was seen as being far too costly to implement its recommendations. And in periods of austerity and with reduced social spending on the neoliberal economic ideologies, costs can become prohibitive. A third factor is methodologies. Governments often introduce social policies that impact on large sections of the population, as their power is based upon popularity of the polling booth. There is a need for consent and public approval in order to govern, and smaller scale methodologies into niche groups in society are less likely to be vote winners than reducing taxation or increasing the upper limit thresholds for national insurance. Other reasons for governments not using sociology revolve around existing connections. Well, governments are often advised by think tanks composed of experts in a specific field that will propose ideas for social policies. As with many other impacts on social policy, these think tanks may have closer social connections with members of parliament than research sociologists do. And so their ideas are often implemented instead of looking into the research of sociologists. Finally, the impact of globalization. As we've seen with Brexit, often government policies are dictated by their involvement in what are international governmental organizations, such as the IMF, the World Bank and the World Trade Organization. These IGOs will provide funding on the basis of what are called structural adjustment policies, which dictate the social spending of governments and economic policies such as free trade between nations. Whilst the impacts of these are more pronounced on developing countries, the UK is still influenced by the social and economic policies of these organisations, which often focus on economic development rather than dealing with social issues in a nation. Of course, there are plenty of examples of how sociologists have influenced social policy. Both left and right realism have influenced policies on crime and crime prevention. New right ideologies have influenced education and healthcare policies. Giddens' influence on new labour cannot be overstated either, whilst the government still provides funding for universities and social groups to conduct research to examine social issues in society, which means indirectly sociology is contributing towards social policy that is derived from those research groups. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on theory and methods, looking at sociology and social policy. Thanks for watching.